sometimes these will have slope fields on them. It's more often than not that they do not have the actual slope field on there, but every once in a while we do run into that. Uh, but what every single one of them does have is a separable differential equation. Yes, ma'am. I need to talk about that with several people though, actually, um, as far as their slopes. Um, <clears throat> there just needs to be a distinct difference between a slope of one and anything that's steeper than one or, or less than steep than one. You can't, you can't guys just slap a line on there and, and think that you've got to be, you've got to be pretty neat about it. All right, um, so they give us the differential equation. It is separable. How do I know that it's separable? Because x's and y's are mixed up here on the right side. You know, I'm going to have to do something with that. They give me an initial condition. If they give you an initial condition, I guarantee you you're going to use it. On the test that I just graded, which I have, I've, I've graded it, um, I have not scaled it yet because we still have some people that have to take it. Um, but uh, several of you didn't use the, the condition that they gave you. You're always going to have a plus C with these problems, okay? Um, so they give us a portion of the slope field, sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1. So you know that that's your starting point, okay? 0, 1 is your starting point. You start right there, and you're going to follow this line, okay? Um, that line right there is probably going to, let's see here, where would that intersect? That would, um, that would probably hit this next line right here and you follow its slope it's going to hit this line okay so we're coming through here you're just following the curve of these lines now they're not going to be super picky over this part uh, this calculate yeah this is calculator inaccurate okay you're just following these um slopes you're following their curve so it's become it's going to become more steep over here Okay, then you have to do this side of it as well. Okay. You know, it's really steep over here on this side. Okay, it's really steep over here on this side. to be super, super picky about, uh, but this side of your curve should definitely come down farther, the left side of your curve should come down farther than the right side of your curve, and you can kind of see that based on these, these slopes are a lot steeper than these slopes over here on the right side, yes ma'am. Um, Side. Next part. The next part says write an equation for the line tangent to the solution. 
distribution curve in part A after point zero one and use the equation to approximate point two uh, for point two. So tangent line to the curve, what do we have to have? The derivative. Well, guess what? That's what we were given. We were given the derivative. Okay? We were given the derivative. We need, um, but what do we do with the derivative? We plug in the point, and that gives us the slope. Okay? So the derivative was um, now, 3 minus y. So dy over dx is equal to 3 minus y times the cosine of x, which is 0. So 3 minus 1 is 2. The cosine of 0 is 1. So that's equal to 2. The slope of the line is 2. Equation of the tangent line, y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 0. You can leave it like that. Okay? You don't have to go farther. Now, we are going to use it to approximate, so technically we need to, it, it would be helpful if we went a little bit further. Um, but helpful hint, um, a lot of times when you use this to approximate, they will, the, the number is always close to the x value, so a lot of times they will keep this x minus 0 because that doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. When it's x were like 1, and they wanted us to approximate at 1.2, then I would leave it in point slope 4 because 1 minus 1.2 or 1.2 minus 1 is just point 0.2. That's going to make your calculations a lot easier than if you put this in the slope intercept form and then plug in your number. Your, your numbers are just going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Okay? <clears throat> um, but anyways, uh, in this point it doesn't matter because it's minus 0, so it's the same difference. All right? Uh, so that's the line tangent to the curve. You get one point for that, and then you get one point for your approximation. So the approximation would be 2 times 0.2 plus 1, so that is 1.4, okay? Now, my assumption is, I do not know this for sure, but my assumption is, and this is how I graded the test, um, if you got the approximation correct based on your tangent line, if your tangent line was not 100% correct, you did not get the point for the tangent line, um, but if your approximation was you plugging the x coordinate into your tangent line, as long as that number was correct based on that equation, I give you the point for the approximation, okay? Not, um, but you didn't get the point for the tangent line, and I'm assuming that they would do that. So um, you could get one out of two points here, even if you didn't get the tangent line all correct. All right, um, let's see, find the particular solution with the initial condition. All right, so this is where we need to separate our variables, and guess what? This Guys, especially when these are short, this question is going to have the bulk of your points, okay? Because they give you a point for, like, each individual thing. You get a point just for separating the variables, okay? You get a point for that. So if that is all you can do, put X on the correct side and put Y on the correct side, then you get a point for that. Even if you can't take it further, don't erase it. Leave it on there, okay? So... Um, the only way to move the 3 minus y to the other side is we multiply by cosine, so we divide. So that's 1 over 3 minus y dy, and we multiply by the dx, so we get cosine of dx on the other side. You know that the purpose of that is to integrate, so even if you can't integrate, at least put the symbol there. Okay? That is, you get one point for that step right there. You get two points for the next step, for the antiderivatives. All right, you get, I'm assuming, one point for the y antiderivative and one point for the x antiderivative. That would make sense, correct? All right, so the antiderivative of 1 over 3 minus y. Natural log, because the y is in the denominator, don't forget the absolute value. It was negative y, so technically we would do a u substitution here, but there's a negative in front, bless you. The antiderivative of cosine is sine of x, and for whatever reason, we always put the plus c on the side with the x. Okay, that's just usually always where we put it. If 
if you didn't, if you put it on the other side or if you didn't put it on there at all? No? I'm certain. I'm certain. Okay. All right. So, um, we got three points so far. Next thing, we need to, and it says one point for the constant integration. So, I don't know if they're meaning if you just stick plus C on the end. Because the next point says uses the initial condition. So, yeah, looks like it, okay? Uses the initial condition. What was the initial condition? Zero, one, right? Yeah, zero, one. <clears throat> okay, so let's plug that in. Uh, one is Y, zero is X. Okay, so that's the negative natural log of two. Well, we don't need the absolute value bars anymore because two is positive. The sine of zero is zero, so that means C is the negative natural log of two. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. C is the natural log of two, negative natural log of two. So then we need to go back and we need to plug it back in. Okay. But it wants the equation. It says to solve it. So you, then your final thing, you get one point for solving for y. Okay, we get one point for solving for y. So first of all, we need to get rid of that negative. Because it was 3 minus y. Because it was negative y, so then you take the antiderivative or the derivative, whichever way you want to look at it, you're going you're gonna to end up with a negative one there. <coughs> um, so that is, let's just reverse the order, natural log of minus the sine of x. Okay. Okay. Yes. To get that y out, we need to, <coughs> excuse me, um, write it in exponential form. So we've got e to the natural log of 2 Well, uh, you've got to deal with the negative first. You have to. Before you can write that in exponential form, the natural log has to be by itself. Where did their natural log of 2 go? Oh. Yeah. Um, subtract 3, yes. And then divide by negative 1, so 3 minus e to the natural log of 2 minus the sine of x. Huh? Because, um, because you don't need it anymore. It's not inside of the natural log. Now, their answer doesn't quite look like this. I really think that this is acceptable, okay? But um, you could be, see this right here, the E natural log of 2. There is some simplifying that you can do there, okay? Remember, you can kind of decompose exponentials, okay? If, if things are being added or subtracted in the exponent, it means that you uh, multiplied like bases and you added their exponents. <clears throat> so e to the natural log of 2 is just 2. And that's how they get their answer in that form. Now, I, I don't, I honestly do not know if they will give you a point for this or if you have to have it like this. I don't know for sure. Yes, Sydney? Um, the other um, yes, these are always inactive. I'm, I'm almost positive that all of the differential equations are always inactive. Yes. 